This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freekeen.com. I'm standing with Craig Haney from Manchester, who is running for uh, select. I'm Alderman, saying, Alderman, Alderman Ward Two. Alderman Ward Two. Uh, which is kind of like the, it'd be kind of like a city council in most towns. It's a pretty powerful position. Um, and you're also a free stater, moved to New Hampshire a year or two ago? Yeah, about two years ago. Um, and you know, you signed a pledge to, to work, you know, hard to bring as much freedom as possible to people who want it in New Hampshire. Right. But, um, tell me, um, a little bit about, uh, you know, how has it been? How has the average person responded to you, you know, being a liberty activist and running for a political office? The average person doesn't know that I'm a liberty activist. I'm running in a primarily Republican ward and, uh, my opponent is a Democrat, and so uh, the average person that I speak to, I'm speaking to Republicans primarily, uh, are very favorable for my uh, for my run. Isn't the city uh, the city alderman board uh, nonpartisan technically? It is nonpartisan technically, but there are 13 Democrats on the board on the board of aldermen and one Republican, and so uh, everybody knows who the Republican is and who the Democrat is. Even though that does, that runs. doesn't appear on the ballot, though. It doesn't appear on the ballot. No. I see. Um, and so now, have you find how what kind of degree of acceptance have you been getting inside the Republican Party? They've been very they've been very favorable to me. And the uh, higher I, ups? Yes, I joined the Republican Party. Uh, I would say maybe six months ago, and uh, they've given me a lot of help. Uh, they've given me a lot of support. Um, they know that we're free staters and they, they support us here in Manchester. Um, we are basically small government Republicans here in Manchester and uh, that's, uh, that's how they see us. And, and so it works out well for us. My experience, I guess this was about two, three years ago, I ran for state rep. Um, you know, I came about six points away from winning and I got far enough along that I ended up becoming like a delegate or something and I had to ended up going to Manchester committee meetings and stuff like that, voting on committee members. You know, actually, you know, it was pretty, it gave me a certain amount of power, just the fact that I ran, and it was, it was pretty efficient for two dollars, you know. <laughs> but but when, I, when I got there, I just, I sensed that there was, it was just a very, and it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it just, it was, it, at different times I felt different things, but sometimes I felt there was just a little bit of tension between, you know, the Liberty Wing of the Manchester, you know, Republican Party and the and the more mainstream wing it wasn't much, but uh, is is even that gone too? I'm not seeing that right now. I'm mm -hmm. seeing uh, I'm seeing help from the top uh, top down in the Republican Party here in Manchester. And that's nice. That's good to see. Um, and as I'm always telling folks, you know, run as a Republican because they, you know, they, we, we 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 sort of fit in. Not perfectly, but. Pretty much. It works out that way because yeah. we're looking for smaller government uh, and the Republicans are looking for smaller government. We're looking mm -hmm. for more private solutions to public problems and the Republicans are doing that too. So we're looking for the same things when it comes down to what are we going to do next year. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we going to do next year is we're going to try, try to balance the budget, we're going to try to bring deficits down, we're going to try to bring the debt down and both Republicans and uh, the Free Staters are looking for the same thing. Yeah, but some people that are not looking for the same thing are our Democrats in Manchester. Your your, your views are very different from the person right. that you're running uh, against. They tend to respond more to the labor unions and their constituents, and taxes are up, and spending is up about 60% more than inflation and population growth would allow over the past 10 years in this city. They don't see any problem with that, and yet the taxpayers here, the people that I'm talking to, do see a problem uh, with continuing to raise taxes, continuing to raise spending, especially when times are bad. I mean, the days when we spend more when times are good and tax more when times are bad have got to stop, and that's, uh, that's my big platform with the Republican base that I'm trying to uh, approach. Can you think of anything that you can do for me? When you get onto the, onto the if, if you get under the board of Alderman on this tribe, uh, and you're going to be facing off with other people who think very differently from you. I know some of them. Some of them. Um, there is. What can you do that, that that both of you can work together on that, that is good for the people that doesn't harm taxpayers? What, what's a win-win solution that 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 the authoritarians and libertarians can come to on a place like the Board of Aldermen in Manchester? I don't know. <laughs> so I want to answer that question directly. I'm not really sure what we can uh, what we can agree on as uh, opponents in this race. My opponent uh, seems to want to continue to spend more and continue to uh, accommodate people um, that work for the city and uh, that that work uh, towards 
uh, increasing spending, increasing services in the city, especially if it, I mean, not especially, but even if it means that taxes must go up, and I, I disagree with that. So I'm not certain I can find a common ground for us in this case. Well, is there a type of cut that, uh, that you can agree on, a uh, type of, um, I mean, for instance, I noticed there's a lot of times when cuts happen in government, they will go after the poor people first, you know, or the folks that can't defend themselves, but they'll continue these massive spending programs that also hurt the poor people. I mean, is there a way you can get them on board with maybe cutting the police department budget a little bit or, you know, getting the police to stop doing these expensive drug arrests? You know, right. Is there and anything I, like that that you can possibly get an authoritarian to agree on just to save money and give their city a little bit more solvency? And I don't know that. I don't know that. But I do believe that we need to build the budget back up from the ground up. We need to do a zero-based budgeting analysis and bring it back up. Uh, the perennial uh, contracts that come up the late, for the labor unions, I think they need to be addressed. When we lose money, as uh, part, when the city loses money because the economy is bad, I don't think you can give raises to people that are on contract, and that's part of the problem. So uh, um, that's that's where I stand on that issue. What's the main thing besides that that you would like to see cut? Oh, uh, the biggest thing is the budget. And uh, well, yeah, but what part of the budget? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what part of the budget to cut. I do know that people tell me that the schools are a problem, that uh, they're actually having to find private money to find supplies for the schools. Teachers tell me this all the time when I'm walking, when I'm walking out in the streets and uh, soliciting votes. Uh, they tell me that, they, uh, that a lot of the classrooms do not have supplies for schools. They don't have books and this sort of thing. But we're spending about $11,000 a year per student. That's about $300,000 per classroom. Um, if you look at the average uh, teacher to, I mean, pupil to teacher ratio, it's about 14 to 1, but the classroom sizes are about 28 to 1. Why do we have this discrepancy? I don't know. Um, but I do believe that throwing money at the problem is not the solution. The solution is going to be trying to find a different way to solve these problems. All right. Thanks, Greg. Good luck out there. Sure, thank you. Now, one thing that uh, actually, a uh, dirty little Ridley secret here, which is not all that dirty, is that uh, actually I voted for a teacher uh, once for um, um, for Manchester, um, I guess it was either school board or it was um, the, the board of aldermen. Uh, I'm not even sure there's separated, but anyway, the, um, uh, the thing that was interesting to me was that the teachers had a lot of good ideas for how, or at least this teacher did, for how to save money. And, the, and actually after she, I don't know if she won or not, but, but her platform did get taken and they did it. I mean, the, the superintendent did what she was wanting them to do. So there's times when the teachers want something. In this case, I think it was uh, the uh, reduction in the amount of spending on the administrative building in, uh, in Manchester's school district. The teachers understand they shouldn't be, you know, spending a lot of money on an administrative building. So uh, a lot of times there are areas where liberty activists and people would, would normally be thought of as our opponents, teachers, um, are on the same side uh, on, on certain issues and we can work together. So that, that would be just an example to me of how your opponent is not always your opponent. Are you a liberty activist willing to be on the front line against socialism? Freekeen.com would like you to consider moving here to Keen. While Keene may have the largest number of liberty-oriented media outlets in the entire state of New Hampshire, there's still a need for more activists. Can you help them? Visit freekeen.com to see what's happening. Freekeen.com hooks you up with all the liberty media in town. Join the Keene Liberty Activists and help free the beautiful city of Keene, New Hampshire. From the clutches of the government. Freekeen.com